So my first question for you, I wanted to start, I really wanted to start about talking about women and how hard it is, especially after trauma, which I know you've been through, how hard it is to come out the other side, even being able to earn money, Mm. like thinking that you are allowed to earn money because it was not that long ago that women weren't allowed to have jobs. Like it's not that long ago. My mother could because she was a teacher. But in reality, a lot of her generation in her 20s, they weren't allowed to have jobs back then. So it's not that long ago we weren't allowed to do what we're doing now. I mean, geez, you are phenomenal. Thank so you. let's, I want to unpack that. Because so many of us are stuck in this mindset of I can't earn money and I don't know where to start. Mm, Okay, good. Thank you. So the question was how do women create, I guess, after having traumatic events, create financial wealth or be able to earn an income? Is that correct? Yeah, especially after they've kind of been programmed into believing that they can't or they shouldn't. Mm. Okay, yeah. So I guess what's popping up for me now is it goes back to, I guess, the Muslim beliefs. Like that's what's popping into my mind as how those women aren't really, or in their religion, they're not really meant to work. But there's very far and few that do work. Some of them are housewives. Some of them are teachers, you know, and it's really frowned upon over there. But I guess in Australia, it's totally different. And I guess what's popping up for me also is with my my Aboriginal heritage, I guess it goes back to roles that women play in the way that men, I guess, contribute in a relationship or a household. And so what's popping into mind is women in Aboriginal culture have specific roles Mm -hmm. and so the role is that they are more of the nurturer, the giver, you know, create life and feed the children and love and care and cook, Mm -hmm. clean all of those customs and duties and make sure the babies are healthy and being responsible, teaching them great values. And so I guess in the men's custom, it's to provide, be the rock, be the protector, keep the family safe and to hunt and gather the food. Yeah. So I guess it comes down to those roots. And I know like in western culture as well it's almost the same as well you know what I mean I do yeah so it's it's really an intergenerational conditioning and it's not so much a cycle but I find that it's more of a conditioning and a way of living and so when we, I guess, step out of our comfort zone into something that is the unknown, of course we're going to have all of these limiting beliefs, these fears, these negative emotions holding us back and people looking down upon us. And it is extremely hard because you don't know what you don't know and you're doing your best with the resources that you have. Mm. and it is really hard to break that cycle and to find a new way of living, right? Mm. Especially when it's such a deeply embedded program if you were raised as a child with that because you share the Aboriginal community. It's not only the Aboriginal community. I know it's my community that was kind of mine and uh, even though I was raised by a single mum who did work, she had to work. She had no choice. There was no man providing for her. So Mm -hmm. it was either work or your children starve. So she wasn't doing something she loved or she was passionate about. 
She just worked for survival, which is kind of different again. But we don't want to do that. We want to work doing something that we love. So how did you start unpacking that in your brain? Mm, Good question. So I guess like long story short with my journey, like I've had so much trauma, so much pain, Mm. so much shame, guilt, anger, rage, sadness in my life. But I guess all of these little challenges or events in my life made me who I am today. And I won't go into extreme detail because I want our audience to actually connect with me later on if they want to know my full story about my traumatic brain injury. So long story short, I had to learn how to walk and talk again. Mm. And my ex did this thing to me and it was tough. It was difficult. I experienced a lot of anxiety I was medically diagnosed with PTSD. I had a lot of depression and I was experiencing extreme suicidal thoughts because earlier on I lost my father. So you can imagine how much pain that I had to experience. But out of all of that, I came to the realisation and also... I had to look on the beautiful side of it and give it an empowering meaner, meaning rather than a disempowering meaning and being a victim and getting triggered and projecting all of my anger, hate, sadness and insecurities onto other people and stop being entitled and always think the world owes me everything and everything should be for free. So I had to learn all of those things on my own. And listen, it wasn't no easy journey. It was a beautiful journey of self-discovery, spiritual growth, personal growth. And I had to face adversity as well. And I can say that I'm totally grateful because he gave me my permission slip to success. and. I'm I honestly don't think I would be here on this earth right now if that did not happen. So I'm just so grateful. It wasn't easy, but I guess I turned my pain into power and purpose. And so my mission here is to raise the consciousness of humanity by creating impact driven leaders. And so I teach women how to even get out of that mindset if they need to or if they have some traumas. But I'm all about leadership. So being an international leadership expert, one of the things that really stands and I stand for is practicing, practice what you preach and embody what you teach. And that's one of my quotes that I just had come to me one day and I was like, hey, this makes sense to me and this is what I'm got. This is my purpose. This is how I'm going to support female entrepreneurs moving forward. There are so many different ways I can go after that. Um, what's something that you did for yourself to turn that trauma because like you said you didn't go into the victim you didn't want to go into being entitled uh that the world owes me that I should get everything for free what's something that you did for you to turn that trauma into something empowering because the victim is such an easy it's such an easy program and it's everywhere Mm -hmm. you look at especially in Australia there's so much support and validation if you are mentally unstable Mm -hmm. (laughs) here have a pill here have free therapy here do this it's free Um, but what you did it's not free it's not easy it's hard and there isn't a stream of people ahead of you that have done it so how did you not be a victim, which you rightly could have become? 
Yeah, okay. Good question. How did I not become a victim? So listen, it's been since the traumatic brain injury, which was in 2016, I played a victim for, I don't know, four years, Mm -hmm. four whole years of victimhood entitlement, being on Centrelink. Thanks, Centrelink. We love you. (laughs) Having no money. Mm-hmm. accepting handouts, going through the public health care system that mm-hmm. fails a lot of people, just a Band-Aid. But I had to go through all of that, you know, and what works for somebody doesn't always work for everyone else. Yeah, sure, have have a pill, have some therapy where you just keep continuing to talk into that victimhood and then unloading and unpacking your problems, but then not actually having something to deal with it. And and not everyone has the willpower to keep going. Sure, there's heaps of books. Sure, you can do things on your own, but it's not going to help. You're actually wasting your time, your energy, and if you're paying for something, you're wasting your money if you think that you're going to do it on your own. Because last time I checked, A brain surgeon does not operate on his own brain to fix it. He actually would get somebody who specializes in brain surgery. He wouldn't just get a doctor or a generalist to support him moving forward with, I don't know, something in his brain. Mm -hmm. And so the first step for me, Kaylee, was for me to invest in myself. And I did have a strong mindset but looking back on it now that was that wasn't even the tip of the iceberg so I had to go through all this pain and our triggers are our teachers every time you get triggered you should be saying thank you because it's it's revealing what you need to heal And so for me like it's been such a long journey and I see a lot of women struggling with money and being a victim but it will only get us so far and I used to blame my brain injury on everything and now I'm just like you know what I feel genuinely 111% healed like I feel as though I'm even way better than I was and I used to look back on my past and go oh I used to be this I used to do that and then have a friggin pity party But now it's like, nah, I don't need to do that. Just move on. Journal it. Talk to somebody who you trust and feel safe with. Talk to somebody who's actually lived that life experience and has a lot of success behind them. Talk to somebody who's authentic and that you connect with and resonate with. Don't just talk to this multimillionaire online. Don't be supporting those people. Support the people who you trust and feel comfortable with and follow their journey, get to know them and then make that decision for yourself. By taking on free things, you're actually wasting your time, energy and you think you're saving money but you're not. You're actually wasting time. Time is something that we all wish that we had back. Time, you can't reverse that. So you invest into somebody so then you can get results and you feel accountable and you commit if you don't then just keep wasting your time and just stay where you are and the truth is no one can do things on their own because the reason why they're in that situation in the start or or now is because they're doing what they've always done they think that they're saving money, but they're not. They're actually wasting money and time. And when you invest into yourself, crazy things happen that you don't even think were possible. Like even now, I look back on my journey and I'm like, how the hell did I get nominated for seven awards last year? How the hell did I speak in front of 500 plus women and men this year? pretty crazy right so I have 
invested over 200,000 into myself since my brain injury. And I don't give a shit about the money. Like I, I see investing into the problem and investing into the problem to make it go away and disappear. Yeah. We invest into the solution. Hope that was really valuable. It really was, and it it brought something up for me. You're talking about time wasting. Do you find, especially with your clients when they first start with you and they're trying to shift more into business, they're trying to take action in their business, they're still stuck in their victim or they're still stuck in the entitlement, they're still stuck in the um, I don't know how to take action, but they spend, let's say, three hours on YouTube scrolling and watching the shorts because they're really addictive. Mm, of course. <laughs> or they're not sleeping. And they wake because they go to sleep or they might wake up in the middle of the night and then instead of maybe journaling what's going on in the head or creating a video for themselves or listening to a meditation, they're jumping on YouTube and they're watching, again, scrolling or they're on Facebook and they're scrolling. What are some things that you could offer to someone that is doing that? Because it is such a time waster. Social mm. media is such a time waster and yet people think they're sitting on Facebook and they're searching for clients, but what they really do is wasting time. Yeah, good question. So what's popping up for me is the first thing is it's a pattern. It's mm. a procrastination pattern and it's a mask. You're faking it because you you don't want help and your trust has been broken in the past. That's why you don't ask for help and reach out. And what I would recommend for those people and our audience is honestly jump on my personal Facebook page, Myra Fordham, and in my biography it says international leadership expert, join my free group. There's actually a free training in there and it's called Crush Self-Doubt and Become a Confident Leader. It's a three-day training. It will only take you under two hours to complete. There's progression tasking. And it's called a challenge for a reason. You're actually going to learn what the title says, crush self-doubt and become a confident leader. Now, this challenge and training has produced amazing results for people, especially people in my group. Mm. You know, there's so many trainings in there. There's so much value, but people still say no because they're scared. They want to stay stuck and they're not really really willing to take full ownership and responsibility for their actions or where they are in life. And it's important if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way. Can't just sit there and have a pity party and just accept free handouts because how many times do you, you probably or the audience, some people might have a whole library of free resources. Who uses them? No one. Just take it for granted, just wasting time. You know, when you invest, you really go all in. It's like a, a commitment. Money is just energy. There's no shortage of money. If anyone wanted to make money for now, they could go and get a freaking job straight away. Like it's not that hard, you know, and this is going to go to the raw end, but some people have sex for money and do other things for money. So there's no shortage on how you can earn money. It's a personal choice. Suffering is a personal choice. Being broke is a personal choice. And I've been there. I went broke in 2021. So I know what it's like to go broke and then apply for Centrelink, work in dollars and cents and frigging hate it. But I had to go through all that to get to where I am now. And I sold my car so then I could invest in a coach. That was $10,000. That was a big amount of money for me back then. Now it's nothing, you know. So if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way. If you don't want it bad enough, you just continue reaffirming how bad your life is and how hard done you are. You know, it's it's not rocket science. And that's why people, that's why very far few people become successful. It's because if 
if it was easy, everyone would be millionaires. It would everyone would be successful. It's only the ones who are willing to have like sacrifice things so they can get what they want and their goals and reach their visions and create financial wealth for themselves. As I was listening to you, I'm so glad you said all of that. As I was listening to you, I was watch I was watching from my own triggers. I'm like, okay, where are my triggers? What's going to come up? <laughs> and I want to know. So the thing that comes up for me is that, but what if I can't? What if what if I can't do it? What if what if I'm not good enough? Or what if what if no one wants to see my stuff? Or what if what if I am not what if I put in all this work and I spend let's say two years putting in the hard work? Mm -hmm. but I don't get anything out of it. And I see that a lot for people in different women's groups and and other groups where they say, I've been doing this for six months and I still don't have a client. I still don't have anyone. I still don't have any money. Mm. What are they missing? Yeah. That you're not missing. Right. Okay. So, before you even start a business, you should really start healing your internal blockages, especially like I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. They're all limiting beliefs. Mm. Like doesn't matter how much work anyone's done. There's always more inner work to be done. It's like a spiral. You heal one thing, another thing pops up. So before you even think about it, like you can start a business too, but it's also it pays to have a business coach in your corner. It pays to have that person who can heal you holistically and reach into your subconscious mind and remove these negative emotions, limiting beliefs from your nervous system and your subconscious mind. So that's what I had to do when I started. That's why I believed in investing in myself. Yeah, I thought it was not true. It, it was not possible. And yes, that's the skepticism kicking in. That's the ego kicking in. So the ego is addicted to negativity. Mm -hmm. And if you don't heal, then you're just going to keep playing out the same patterns, honestly. And, you know, like I said, there's no shortage in money. You can get a loan. You can ask someone. If you're on Centrelink for six months, you can reach your super. There's so many ways, but women are just not using their resourcefulness inside. They just want it or hand it out to them. But the then, entitlement, right? Exactly. And yeah. if you're not if you're not being resourceful, then what's the point? Like you're not actually tap tapping into that unlimitedness and that resourcefulness. Mm. Like if people want to do something for you and spoon feed you, then just just be a baby and act like a baby. Just do nothing. Just stay on settling. Don't get a job. Don't do anything. Just chill. Don't change and don't invest in yourself if you don't want to change. Like it's pretty easy and lovingly I'm going to say this. All of these things in our minds, they're all freaking bullshit. They're all just downloads and conditioning. It's like mm -hmm. us having a virus in our computer from childhood. And it, it actually travels down from like intergenerational in our genes, genealogically, in our past lives. We all have these things. But it's our choice and our decision. Like when is enough enough? When are you going to stop feeling sorry for yourself and throwing a pity party? You can't do this on your own. You can try. It's going to take you 10 times longer. You know, like it's important to really reach out and get in touch. See what works for you, what not works for you. And like I I had to start off small too and I self-funded my whole business. Was it a good idea? Not really. Should I have asked for free resources and free stuff from the government? Yes, I should have. That's the one thing I'll do differently. But you need to have somebody who's walked before you. And this is for the audience. 
You need to find a mentor who's walked before you, who's made those mistakes. So then you don't have to go through the same thing. Then you can just ask them for support and help. You know, it's all important. It's all about asking. And I know it's hard sometimes to ask for help. Put your pride aside and your ego, shut the hell up ego, and just ask for help coming from a place of love and genuine genuine intention of wanting to make this work. Mm. And so one thing I wanted to share is I, I used to give a lot to everyone, a lot. I still do because I know that it's going to come back. It's going to be valuable. But at the same token, I'm not a charity. Okay, If I wanted a charity, I would have opened a non-for-profit or a charity. Later on, I'll open up maybe a women's shelter or something, but that's a long-term later goal. Right now is what important is making that money because money equals freedom, opportunities. The more money you make, the more you can invest into doing more for others and yourself. You know, you see rich people, they have lots of money. They donate it to charity too. You can do that too, but you need to look after yourself first. You know, it's very important that we start having those boundaries too. You know, don't be a doormat for anyone. Start saying no. Start charging what you're worth. If women here that are listening don't have a high ticket item, just forget about it. If you're going to charge $25 for something, like that's not going to scale. That's not going to help you to build your dream, your vision, and your goals. What you do is you need a high ticket item in your business. Later on, later on, then you have little things that are bread and butter money, little $25 things, little $15, you know. That's the bread and butter money. That's for later once you have a good income. And that is such a good point um, that you shared. And as I was listening, I heard you say, and I'm paraphrasing because it was a minute ago, mm -hmm. and I wanted to keep listening to what you were sharing as opposed to holding on to what you said. Mm. But it was women that are in their struggle and taking responsibility and it's not it's not easy stepping up and taking responsibility and saying i i am now here i am in the crap hole i now need to get myself out of it whether you're a single mum you may have gone through physical abuse you may have gone through mental abuse you might have mental issues you may have been in hospital all of those things might be true And it's okay if you want to stay in the struggle, mm. but that's not actually going to get you out. And I'm so curious to hear what was the, do you remember the defining moment where you were in the struggle, in the struggle, you were in the victim, you really thought you were there, you really thought you were there, and then one day you just went, screw this, I'm out of here. Mm. What was that? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to get really explicit on this. I hope you're okay with that but I, I actually believe in authenticity and being real and raw mm -hmm. so there was a time in my life I actually created a GoFundMe mm -hmm. because I couldn't work like I was not allowed to work I was on Centrelink but I had all of my working arrangements on hold because I was actually medically not able and not fit to work mm -hmm. and the funny thing was that with a brain injury, they class you as being disabled. Like I wasn't disabled, but I couldn't work and I couldn't really articulate my thoughts and communicate clearly and concisely. And my fatigue levels were very high. And I was actually not able to even jump on to the disability pension either. So it was really interesting. And so I decided, okay, the best way I'm going to do this is make a GoFundMe just for now, you know. 
mm-hmm. just for now until my compensation comes in and all that stuff as well, which took two years after the brain injury, a long time to wait. Mm-hmm. And I created a GoFundMe and I had quite a few people donate and then I asked my friends, like, hey, would would you be able to donate just something small, you know, just to help me keep going? And one of my mates triggered the hell out of me. She was like, oh, no, I'm not donating to this. You're not a victim. This is not who you truly are. And then this is my inner dialogue, by the way. What the fuck? Like, why doesn't she want to help me? Like, I thought she was my friend. See all the entitlement in the victim. Yeah. And I even spoke to my husband and I was like, why the fuck doesn't she want to, like, help me? I thought she was a friend. And then he just, he's like, nah, like, she sees it from a different perspective. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That makes sense. But I was triggered. Like, I was, I was pretty, like, triggered. And then it got to a stage where I couldn't, pull the victim card and my pity party story to everyone because it just got like sounded like a broken record yeah I get that you just you you repeat it so often to so many people you start to hear yourself repeating it going shit I'm stuck in a record (laughs) Mm, yeah I get that yeah and I learned the victimhood from my aboriginal side and I used to listen to everyone gossiping about others. So I learned that trait from them. Mm -hmm. And so then I was doing those patterns as well. And then I got to a particular part in my life, which was 2020, when I decided to sign up and become a coach. Um, I got so sick and tired of my own fucking bullshit like you get so sick of yourself, like you get friggin' angry and you rage and you want to break things in the house. Like you just get so tired of it. And like I was very violent and abusive as a partner before, before I healed and even before the brain injury too. And you just get to this place where you're like, is this really how my life is meant to be? Like, does God and the universe and my creation spirit really want this? Is this how my life is going to be for the rest of my life? And I was like, well, if it is, like, this is pretty fucking sad. It's fucking miserable. Like, why would I want that for myself? And I just got so sick and tired of it, so angry, and I was like, fuck this, enough is enough. Like I'm done with all this shit. I need to find a way through this. So that that frustration and sick of my own bullshit and my excuses and my projections and my smoke screens and my escape patterns, right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I come to the realisation I need fucking help. I don't need this help. Like who can help me? And that's when I spoke to my old mentor and he I told him my whole life story and then he's like, well, what do you want to do? Like, you told me everything. It costs $4,000. Like, you're going to, let's do this. And I just, I cringed. I was like, what the hell? And then I screamed inside because I had so much low self-worth and I was just like, what the hell? Like, this is fucking expensive and this is all my inner dialogue. This is fucking expensive. Oh, my God, I'm nervous oh, I don't think I can do this, or I really want this, but I don't want it that bad. And then I felt like a fraud and an imposter. And he held me accountable. But for me, it was my fear and and my intuition, which isn't always your intuition, by the way. Sometimes it's fear. Mm -hmm. It was going off its Richter. It was like, oh, my gosh, no, you can't do this. This is crazy, Myra. This is a lot of money, but little did my old mentor know. I had 40 Gs in my bank, like in my savings, just doing nothing because I got my inheritance, my um, compensation, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to part with that money. But then, then you want to hold on to it, hey? Yeah, you think, yeah. Be- if if this is gone, then I'm right back to where I was 
when I didn't have the money and now I'm even more screwed because there's no more money coming. Exactly. And the yes. reason why I came to this conclusion the other day, I was I was really reflecting on it because I wanted to really deliver something powerful for yourself. And the reason why we hold on to that money is because it's like safety. It's a safety net. Mm -hmm. So it's safety. When we let go of that money, it feels like, like our power and our energy is lower, even though we're investing into ourselves. And it's about that self-worth. So when we have no money, it's like we're in that survival mode. And then we're like, we can't breathe. And then financial things pop up. Then, yeah, it's just... It's a very, very uncomfortable situation, but it can be gotta, paralyzing sometimes. Yeah, you gotta you gotta invest money to make money. Every time I invest, money just comes into my account. It's so it's crazy. The universe just knows it's about quantum field as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you are who you attract and you don't get what you want, you get what you are. And now that I'm more abundant. And I've worked through these money bullshit little stories and worked on my self-worth. Mm. I can genuinely say that, you know, and after my own findings and learnings that, yeah, it is. It's a safety net. It means that you, oh, I don't feel safe anymore. So you actually mm. make this meaning up in your mind about money. And so what I wanted to share about money here today is, we need to start treating money like it was like the most amazing partner ever. Whether we're straight, whatever you're into, we need to really treat money like it was the best partner, the most healthy relationship we could ever have possible and make it feel nice and happy and appreciated and just what your vision is of a healthy relationship. Just make that with money and change the story and change the narrative and voila. Oh, that was so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it just flowed on through. Um, and I know you are on limited time today. And I know if I ask you another question, it's going to take us down another rabbit hole. You can if you want. I got one more in me. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I know you want to ask it, please. Um, I. Oh, what was my question? Um, how did you? So after everything that you shared, there's so much inspiration, there's so much desire, there's so much passion, there's so much drive. And I really see in myself and other people around me that are struggling is that lack of drive. Mm. And I'd love to hear your insights on that because I know you didn't have drive. I know it didn't, like it wasn't there. <laughs> is it something that came after you made the decision to go for it? Is it something that you needed to create? Is it that, do you know what I mean by drive? Mm, yeah, good question. So how did I create the drive? Well, I guess maybe going back on your question and perhaps assumption, I did have drive before and I guess it comes down to my childhood. So my mother always taught us girls because I have an older sister mm -hmm. she taught us to be strong courageous speak your mind speak your truth and go for your dreams like don't fucking hold yourself back because that mm -hmm. opportunity won't be there tomorrow it's either now or never and so for me I just always took the leap of faith and I've been to amazing places in my life I've done incredible things I got to sail from Darwin to Singapore on a boat while I was working on deck if I didn't say yes then I guess forget about it so my strongest belief now is say yes now find out how later okay that's a really good way to measure your success your life and 
if you don't put that intention out there, what you want, and mm-hmm. make up your mind and sit on the fence all the time, then you're always going to do what you've always done. Therefore, you're going to get what you've always had, right? And that so, indecision comes from, like you said, that safety, not feeling safe mm, in yourself to mm. actually make a decision in case you mess up and then you get punished for it. Mm, yeah, it goes back to childhood. Yeah. So if you make a mistake, you're a naughty girl, naughty boy, whatever the hell you want to be. Um, but you know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's going back to childhood conditioning. Oh, I'm going to make a mistake, you know. And if I'm honest, like all of my failures have created success. All of my pain has turned into purpose and passion. Mm-hmm. And if I, I, I really want to tell you the truth that if I told you that there has been not one time when I wanted to quit, it's all bullshit and lies. Like I've, Kaylee honestly wanted to quit many friggin' times and I have quit a lot of things. I didn't finish high school. I've dropped out at the end of year 10. Mm-hmm. So it goes to show that that pattern started when I was 15. Yeah. And so I kept quitting, 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 quitting until 2020-ish. There's still more patterns in there up until now and I said no, like enough's enough. I'm done quitting. You're all the you either all in or nothing. And as Yoda says, do or do not. There is no try. That's true. From That's Star true. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, it does. Brings up more questions, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I will, I would love to jump on next time. For yeah, sure. definitely. Uh, can you, I've loved this conversation so much. There's so much good, like juicy stuff in this chat. Can you share your website? I know you have Boss Mind and can you share a bit about Boss Mind as well? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So at the moment, to be honest, my website's actually being built behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But otherwise what I can do is I can send you the link to all of my, I guess, my free content, my resources, all of my socials. But the best way to reach me is on Facebook. So my name is Myra Fordham, M-Y-R-A-F-O-R-D-H-A-M. And then my Instagram tag is at Myra Fordham, one word, underscore coaching. So Instagram And I'm basically on all platforms. There's no way that you cannot find me. Even if you're just not sure, just Google Myra Fordham. There's going to be a million articles on there, (laughs) my pages on there, shows like all of my success on there. So please don't be a stranger. Please reach out and let me know, like, what was your biggest takeaway from this podcast? And please join my group so then you can really jump into my challenge, crush self-doubt and become a confident leader. You don't know what you're missing out on, honestly. It's going to shift your mindset and it's totally free. I strongly encourage that you join just so you can even see what's possible for yourself. You're going to be transformed and like, 24 hours honestly like that's pretty crazy and then you can even if you're considering working with me we either in one of my group programs or one-on-one then you can see and have a little taste tester of what it's like to work with me and I I just want the best for you and I want all of you to succeed and keep climbing you know and if you want to work through those money stories, Boss Mind's the best place for you. Awesome. And I'm going to make it much easier by putting it in the description as well. I will get all the links off you and I will put it in there. Oh, man, thank you very much for this conversation. It has it's been a real gift. You are my first on the money series conversations and this was an awesome way to start the series. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm just wishing you so much love and light and success and healing. And hopefully today was very, very valuable for you. And I strongly recommend you journal to integrate the learnings here today as well. Great idea. Thank you. So... 
that was the first of my money series, as you know. And oh, there's so much, there's so much, there's so much I got out of that. I have to listen to that one again. There were so many different avenues that I could see that I still need to look at. I still need to, I need to look at them. I need to look at so many different avenues, especially safety around money, trust around money. And somebody's trusting, we didn't, we didn't dive too deep into this, but we did talk about, Myra did mention trust. And it is trust, trust in having money, trust in allowing myself to earn money, trust in me being able to deal with the people that don't like me based on how I earn money because that's really out there. Um, And the thing I love about Myra, and we talked a little bit after the call, is that she is who she is and she doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks of her. She is who she is. She's on a mission to share her wisdom. She's on a mission to share her, her story and she's on a mission to inspire people. And if she can inspire someone into a better space and into a better place, then she has done a really good job. Yeah, this was such a good episode for me. I hope it was a really good episode for you. Please make sure you do check the description because I'm going to put this information in here for Myra and I will update it when her new website goes online. So if her website is there, then her new website is online. Also, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel, please. We all know it really helps the algorithm and make sure you share it as well. There are so many women that are struggling through their money stories and that are struggling through their money trauma and that are stuck in that generational pattern. And I really feel like this is the start of opening up something amazing in this podcast series around money and women. And I think there's also a man that's coming in as well. Uh, We had an amazing chat the other day and I'm going to share. He's coming on my podcast. I had an amazing chat on his podcast and he's coming on to mine. So, yeah, make sure you share this, please. I think we need to get Myra out in the world. She is a gift and I would love to see her information get out to more women. It's, It's necessary. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you are greatly appreciated. Mwah.